This podcast is with Alexander Clifford, a Finnish musician and music producer, recorded 29 May 2021. Please like this video and subscribe to this channel for more great content. I'm the only English-speaking podcaster in Finland. Um, just wanted to ask you, so do you remember anything about your wonderful life in Canada? A little bit, yeah. I remember where, I think I remember two of the places that we lived in, or two of the houses that we lived in. One was um, a, a flat, and then the other one was a kind of a same type of, type of building that we're in right now, but, but we were on, on the bottom floor. And we had this um, balcony on the bottom floor hmm. um, where my mom would always just throw me over the balcony and then we would roll this puck down this really big hill over to Andrew's house, which so, is over on the right. Throw you. Yeah, she would just throw me over the balcony <laughs> onto the grass and then she would hop off or hop over as well. And, hmm. then, um, and then there was this big road and there was a big hill that went down and yep. then on the, you know, on the bottom of that hill. Andrew and his family lived over there yep. to the right. I yep. think it was like the second big house yep. to the right. And it was like a blue house. And then also just across from that balcony that I was throwing over always, there was this rock um, over in a little forest that I had to go there, and give yeah, my... Yeah. You remember what, do you remember what we put there? Because you were, you, um, were quite dependent on those... Soothers or duties, I guess Finns. Yeah, yeah. Do, do you remember what we put there and the reason why? Yeah, I do. We, <laughs> uh, my mom told me that uh, we're gonna give them to these little birds, <laughs> and that they need them more than I do. So that that's why I have to let them go. Yeah, yeah. Because the birds need them, and so I felt very sympathetic towards the birds, and that and that's why I was okay with leaving them over there. But I still cried when yep. I went overhead. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it was really cute that the way your mother put it and, and how you felt so sympathetic for the birds. Yeah. And, and you were you were making sure the birds, uh, was it, uh, had your, your tutti. So it was, it I was, think so, yeah. It was cute. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Anything else you remember from the good old days? From the good old days, yeah. yeah. Um, well, that flat that we lived in, I remember that. Um, I remember the room that I slept in and I remember whiskers being on top of this big wardrobe or okay this, guys uh, he has to oh, explain whiskers, who yeah. whiskers is yeah whiskers was my little minnow he was a little fish who uh, it was this... a, actually a zebra oh a zebra okay a zebra fish i forget the technical but it had name. this from the belly it was this um silver color and then it had this red dot and then it was blue on the back that was whiskers and then of course he had whiskers that's why his name is whiskers and then he was living in this round tank on top of my little wardrobe and um yeah so that was my room and then i oh well once i tied this string onto my <laughs> one of the handles of my wardrobe and i pulled the whole wardrobe down and whiskers was on top of it and he just came flying down and then you picked him up and you put him in a bucket full of water and flour that actually yes and, i i was making a cake at that time yeah you're making a cake yeah. and uh, i had to rescue whiskers Yeah. So I had I threw water in, into the into this um, measuring cup. It was yeah. a measuring cup. Yes, and uh, the, me the measuring cup was filled with with flour. So I poured water into it, and yeah. it was making dough. Yeah. So I threw whiskers in. I thought whiskers will never survive this, <laughs> but he did. He survived. Yeah, he survived. Actually, we gave the fish away when we moved out. When yeah. we moved out, yeah. Actually, that was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. So <laughs> I don't want to ask you about more detail about. Uh, that life in that other country. So, do you remember your first um, memory of here in Finland? You remember your first time coming here? Um, I remember one of the flights that we took over here. 
where there was a very nice flight attendant. I think we were flying Air Canada. And she was very nice and she made me this little home inside of the airplane. It was a really big Airbus and there were like these three seats in the middle and two seats on either side. And then there weren't that many passengers on that day. And then I had the whole middle row of the three seats to myself. And then there was this really nice flight attendant who uh, brought me some pillows and um, I don't know, blankets and so forth. And then she made me this little hut and she gave me some games and I was, and that I remember, I think that was the flight that we came or that we took when we flew to Finland because I took it with my mom, you weren't there when we flew over. At least that, that must time. have been another time because Probably I, the other time, I, yeah. I flew over when we moved, when I moved over, we flew over together. Okay. Well, so that it might have been, remember. yeah, because yeah. you flew back to Halifax when I stayed here to get us a house and okay. looking yeah. for work and so forth. So, yeah. 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 So then you must have come back that way. Yeah. Because yeah. I was with my mom. Yes, that's that right. That time and you weren't there that, yeah. 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 Because I had to find a place to live. So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, um, I remember that flight very well. And it was always commented by everyone, you know, when they see a, a small kid on, on a, bus or a mm. train they always, or an airplane they always say that you know here we have a, a kid who's going to scream and yell mm. you know i'm mean, screaming and yelling all the way from toronto to heathrow mm. that's four and a half five hours of you screaming mm. but everyone was so surprised at how quiet you were and polite and nice you were you would wave at everyone and you would laugh and giggle mm -hmm. so everyone was saying gee this kid is really well behaved of course mm. we knew better Mm. That you weren't so well behaved, but when you were with other people, you were really, really confident with everyone. It was, it was really yeah. nice, and everyone would always say, "Wow, you know, this kid really knows uh, how to look after himself. He's really very nice guy." Mm. Yeah, okay. that's good to hear. I didn't know that, but yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, everywhere we we go on buses or whatever, that was always the comment that you got along with everyone so well. It's still the case, isn't it? You get along with everyone so well. Yeah, I think so. I mean. I, I used to be too nice. I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to be too nice anymore to people that I don't know. So What do you mean, too nice? What well, too nice in a way that I'll probably get myself into... Um, you mean you can't say no? Uh, you yeah, I can't say no, but then you know, I, I would be nice to people that weren't even that Remote? nice. Or I'll, I'll be nice to people who didn't even deserve <laughs> Yeah, to be nice to, in a way. So, so that I've learned, not to be nice to everyone. Yeah. That I've learned. Hmm. I'm a little bit sad about that. No, because... I mean, no, but that's, that's a good thing. Because, I mean, if you're nice to people who aren't nice, then why would they deserve your niceness in a way? Well, I mean, I could be the, uh, the philosopher in the room here that you don't know what everyone else is going through. No. Yeah. So, you know, if you can recognize that someone is just not being nice to you, mm. but you're still nice back... Yeah. You can at least recognize the fact that, that you're doing the best the best you can. Oh, yeah. To make I mean, sure you're not I, being a jerk. I would still do that. But, um, okay, maybe maybe I, um, maybe I meant that I don't, uh, like, before I would always think first that, you know, no one, no one could do, like, anything bad. And, you know, I would always think the best in people. Like you but probably, isn't that good? That's good, but sometimes that might get you into trouble. So maybe before you think the best about everybody, maybe you should kind of know how to evaluate, you know, or like evaluate the situation better before you just hop into um, trusting them and being being nice. Okay. Yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. that, that um, uh, shocks me a bit because, you know, uh, if there's one thing about your mother and I, you know, yeah. we, we've always been trying to be very nice to each other. For sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah, we've yeah. always made sure you just stay nice. Yeah, yeah. Because if there's one thing about your mother, she's inc extraordinarily nice. She's she's very nice, yeah. 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 So, But she, she also taught me not to be too nice to everybody. She she always told me that my issue is that I'm way too nice and that I take too much crap from people. So so she's all also told me that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, even though well, she's nice, but I think that she meant it. Just in the same way that I just did. I'm not saying not to be nice to anybody and and just be an asshole always. But you should uh, know when to be nice and when not to be nice to somebody because like there's no point in being nice to everybody. Okay. If you're not nice people, so like why should you be nice to assholes? Well, I mean, uh, I guess there's more I could say. But that's your personal opinion, of course. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I, I could say that that you know in some circumstances in some situations. 
you have no choice but to be nice to people who are assholes. Yeah, yeah. Now, have you ever had to, uh, <laughs> this should be a good one, have you ever had to try to pretend to be nice to me uh, just to get me either to shut up or <laughs> to, to stop talking in a certain way or Isi, can you just stop, uh, Isi means father in Finnish. Mm. Um, uh, no, I think I've always... Um, I've always felt you'd be extraordinarily honest with me and, and, and brutally honest in some occasions. And yeah. I, I, I never took it as being as being a bad yeah. thing. Yeah, no, I mean, me neither. I think I've I've managed to be pretty transparent and I've not had to be nice um, even if I didn't want to be nice. So if I didn't want to be nice, then, you know, I had a way of saying it. Um, yeah, but it's so rare at yeah, the moment yeah. that we would actually disagree. Yeah, it's pretty rare. And even yeah. if we do, then, you know, it, it, it never really adds up to a issue we just no, agree that's true. to disagree I, ha, yeah. have we ever come to a point where we had an argument of course outside of the fact that that when you were a child we had to have disagreements as yeah as fathers and sons do yeah that was um, pretty often something what i did yeah yeah and i, and and I probably, deserved, yeah. And you probably deserved it <laughs> yeah and i probably deserved it. Yeah. yeah however when you became more mature i don't think we ever had a moment where we have a disagreement where we can't talk to each other i don't think it's ever happened yeah no i, I don't think it's ever happened so there's something then about you then. It's not me mm. because I think that I divide opinion amongst people. There's either uh, really like me or really hate me. There's very little in the middle. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. with you though, you seem to be able to, to work with many, many people. You have a much better attitude about... Yeah, I think I'm just, um, I'm, I'm probably more agreeable. That's probably true. Yeah. I think maybe you're just more comfortable with your abilities and you don't seem to worry about your, your lack of ability. Mm, yeah, yeah, maybe. You're not self-conscious in that way. Because that is remarkable, you know, you have to admit that. Yeah, or, or then it's just me being more agreeable in a way that I'm willing to take. Is a compromise? That, that yeah, as a compromise, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to agree at times when it probably doesn't, you know, serve me at all. And I just agree. Of course it serves you. Yeah, well, it serves me in, in that current situation. It probably saves me some at that current time it probably saves me from an argument but then in the future it might be a disservice to me for doing that because being agreeable is also you know you can kind of take that for being a little bit weak in a certain way gee <laughs> yeah I, I don't think i've ever thought of you as being weak yeah no, never. <laughs> no. yeah well i mean but i'm talking about the brutal world out there. <laughs> yeah if, yeah that, that's true if you're too agreeable i would i would think that People will th uh, think that, you know, compared to a person who is more unagreeable, you would probably be considered as being a bit weaker because yep. you agree that, more. At yeah. that, I absolutely agree with. Yeah. And I don't think any big, big CEO of any big company is a, you know, I don't think they're really agreeable people most of the time. I think mostly they're pretty non-agreeable people. Because they don't take no for an answer. That's not true. Have you met any CEOs of big companies? Well, I haven't met them personally, but just yeah, I'm just thinking out loud. <clears throat> okay, I've met <clears throat> when I think of one large company, one of my clients. I have met mm. the CEO yeah. of it. It's one of the probably is it the, one of the, the single largest IT company okay. uh, in yeah. Finland. And yeah. I met I met him. Yeah, I'm not okay. saying I'm not going to say his name and you know do the the flex seeing. I'm not going to do yeah. any of that. Uh, and of course, I know what you're going to say, pictures or it didn't happen. Mm. However, I had met him and mm. I have to say that um, uh, he was with a, a couple of clients and uh, his employees were terrified of him. And yet I got along. I, they didn't even introduce me to him. They walked mm. away. They didn't, they didn't want to be in his presence. And I sat there and just talked to the man. He was a really funny man. He was extraordinarily nice. Mm. I think you have to be if you're a CEO of a large company, you have to be play politics and be nice to so many other people. For sure. He was yeah. a great guy. But by him being there, he probably, um, I don't think he got there by being agreeable. He probably didn't take no for an answer and that's why he's there right yeah, now. Yeah, that is. might be. That and why would you. all the people be afraid of him if he was yeah. so nice? <laughs> Good point. <laughs> yeah. And welcome back. I'm Alexander Clifford, a drummer of Sugar Balls, broadcasting live from Studio 105 here in Southern California. And what a lovely session it is. Now let's go see what the other band members are up to. Just a minute. 
good at walking through this door here. Can't get it open. Check it, check it, check it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Sugar Balls, and we're gonna play your cover called Beside You by Five Seconds of Summer. Okay, let's stop that because that's, okay. that's a little bit too much about that. Yeah. But what I really want to get into, because um, things are really flowing between us, 
um, uh, is really get into this the music you're into. Okay. Um, uh, because you know, um, you know, you, you have a really great career. Many people don't know you, that 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 they have um, uh, streamed from Spotify mm. millions of of your songs. Mm. And it's funny that, that when I when I put on Facebook and, and through Instagram just a bit about what you've done, many people were just in shock. That mm. I mean, he's the guy who did. Mm. He, mm. Yeah. He, yeah. yeah. So I think that that you know when you were in front of the camera and you were you were the the, the percussionist for your original group. Mm. What what was your original idea with that? Because I had I had to tell you, of course, from my personal opinion, mm. I loved your work. It was yeah. kind of the punk grunge. Yeah. idea it was fantastic work so um what got you started first into that and of course your two friends uh sebastian and jesper mm. um uh, so what can you just go through a bit of a timeline there with that with us because i i'm fascinated by, by by what you do when it comes to the band you mean like yeah the band stop? first yeah there's so much i could ask but <laughs> just go with the band first well um well the drumming began like that that thing began Probably when I was. Oh, do you remember? Very when, young. Very remember young. when your mother and I got you involved in that that lady with music when we were living in uh, Spryfield. In, yeah, in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember the stories yeah. we told you? Yeah, she was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think, just a bit of a background. I don't think she would be the reason why I ever got no, into no, music. No, no, no. But just a bit of a background yeah. to it. That um, Alexander, how were you? You weren't. You weren't three because you, you came here when you were three. Yeah. So, yeah. so we got him involved in a, a local community. Um, uh, I don't know. She worked for the town and she was involved in mu music. Yeah. And I won't say those. I don't want to embarrass her because, you know, she had a particular theory and style but, uh, and she was quite theatrical about it. Yeah. And what we noticed is that you really love going. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and, and it just seemed that every time you got involved in some instrument, she would take it away from you yeah. and give you another instrument. And then okay. it seemed like that, it, would, it seemed to me that you really loved music yeah. at a very, very young age. I don't mm -hmm. know, uh, I played guitar in those mm -hmm. days and I was uh, trying to learn uh, guitar. And so when it came over here, you know, uh, into Finland, then I started practicing guitar so then, then take us through about, about when high school happened yeah um, in, in, in high school I started playing drums more seriously I got my first um, electric drum kit that I was playing in my mom's apartment and I did that for many years probably about seven years I did that and then uh, for the last maybe four years before I got involved in the band thing I was taking lessons from a uh, professional teacher how to play the drums and he he also taught me how to play this uh, marimba so it's like a big piano that you hit with these mallets so I played that and then I was also playing the drums at the same time and then and then um, I didn't really think any of it I just knew that I loved music and I was just you know playing drums because I really like to do it and then um, and then I kind of quit for a year because I don't know I was I was just getting ready to go to high school and I thought that music would always be in my life but not in such a big role so then once I met my um, bandmates Sebastian and Jesper they wanted to put together a band and it was perfect because uh, Jesper was a guitarist and a vocalist and Sebastian who's my really good friend and still is who I still make music with was a bass player and then I was a drummer and then we could all sing What you mean to me Never ever took you to even see a movie Oh, what such a nice place to be But we didn't realize that we got bored to see each other's faces Love six in American Express Love six in American Express Love six in American Express Going down in the round Can I go back? Always thought that you were meant to so then we just formed a band and we were a band for four years and yeah we did we did some nice songs and 
and like well, I, I was impressed and were, okay. with the music, yeah, yeah, but 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 I mean, it was just a mm, a few years for me to learn how to work with people in music and and um, I mean, yeah, we all wanted to be a successful band, but we didn't have enough experience and we were okay at what we did but um it would have required is, a lot he, of work and it, it would have required a joint effort of from all of us and as much effort as we ever could um to actually be something with that band but then um about can five I, years can i ago, jump in yeah go ahead because i'm the audience yeah um uh you know he is downplaying uh his role um um you know of course rather biased uh, however when i first heard them mm. i i was stunned when i first heard you guys at, at your high school mm. inviting us okay i'm gonna hear like a you know, i used to play in a, a school band mm. and i played the tuba yeah and so i thought it'd be you know something horrendous yeah <laughs> horrendous like that yeah. however when i walked in and you guys began to play I, my jaw hit the floor mm. because i heard this 80s maybe more 90s style um there's a band in in halifax uh i'm not going to give out the name or I, i'll do a little bit on them they they were a fantastic band and they were pretty hot um, when we left halifax and you guys had that same sound mm, mm, i yeah. said my god you know, how how and your mother came to me did you know he could do this no i didn't know they were part of this mm. this style of band we we, we just didn't know we mm. just thought okay i'm gonna go practice okay go practice when we first heard you, we thought, well, geez, there really is something here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then your music videos were coming out. and Yeah. Yeah, music yeah. videos, yeah. So, so I, I thought that you left there because um, you had injured your hand when you were uh, waiting tables, bussing tables, and you couldn't play the, the drums anymore. For a period of time, because yeah. it, it really caused pain, because you had to. Yeah, yeah. And I really thought that that's when you drifted away from from playing, mm. and you got more into producing. Um, I don't think that was the oh. sole reason why I was kind of getting tired of the whole band um, dynamic that we had going. One, two, three, four. So let's just say that we all then get along with each other as well as we wanted to, or as that's, well as that's, I would have wanted to. That's the to. same with every band, though. Yeah, I yeah. think it's the so-called artistic differences with yeah. every band. Yeah. So you guys weren't doing anything that that I thought was unusual or strange. No, no. It was no. just part of being in a band. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, how many bands do you know who start out at at zero level mm -hmm. and are still together after 20 years yeah after I mean, two years yeah it, it, <clears throat> there are very it, very few it does require um a lot of work and i guess uh, when i was 18 i wasn't um ready to go through all that crap because i didn't see a future for the band anymore after being in it for four years i just didn't see it going anywhere so um about two months before i left the band i had um gotten my first macbook and what I wanted to do with it first was to record covers for a band, some acoustic covers, and put it on YouTube and just kind of do a little editing on the audio so that we would, you know, sound okay. And and I did that, and then I bought all the programs that were required to do that. And then we were already doing pretty bad at this point, so 
Um, so I just started adding. I mean, the dynamic wasn't going so well. Yeah, it wasn't okay. going so well. So we were just doing these little um, acoustic covers and thing, and I, and I was recording them with the new MacBook, and I was kind of, you know, editing, doing some some form of mis uh, mixing on, on the uh, audio that we recorded. And then while I was doing that, I, I realized that I really like this part of the industry. And then I also started adding some of my own sounds on top of those little coverings. And then I realized that, hey, that, you know, I could do all this and I have the control that if I want to add drums, I could just add drums if I knew how to do it. And then I could add vocals, I could sing them myself and I could add guitars, pianos and all these melodies. And I wouldn't need anyone to come on time to training to do that. So I could just, you know... Because um, you are quite good at the guitar. I'm terrible at guitar he's but, not but, but he has my is, guitars <laughs> but but the thing is that like with the com uh, with a computer and as a producer you can basically um output all of your ideas into into the computer and you don't basically need anyone else to do anything for you you don't need anyone else to come on time to trainings on monday morning to play the guitar because you're the drummer so you need other people as well to make music so um, with production, you don't need anyone else except for yourself. So, so I just saw an opportunity there because I was getting sick and tired of always, uh, you know, having to wait for people to come to trainings and then wasting a lot of time and then and then the whole band dynamic wasn't what I wanted it to be. So, and then I just got more and more involved into producing and mixing, and finally I just left the band and just concentrated on that. And then, fast forward five years, I'm 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 here now doing it for a living. To hear about Alexander's career as a Finnish music producer, please subscribe to this channel and hit that bell notification so that when part two is uploaded, you will be notified. See you soon. Bye-bye.